Hello everyone and welcome to another top five list. Today I am joined by Jordan. Hello. Hello. We are going to be going over our top five two-player only games and it was really fun coming up this list. We've both said it was hard work to work out exactly the top five so there are some honourable mentions but let's take it away Jordan. What is your number five? Yeah so my number five game is um i don't believe is in print um i did cover it on the dice tower uh, briefly during a board game breakfast segment and that's called uh, trombon and this is a uh, two-player card game in the lookout um two-player series of games in which you are using multi-use cards so the cards can be used to create trolley routes they can be used to have passengers and they can be used as money as well the backs of the cards are all money and so Throughout the game, you're going to be um, creating sets of cards that are going to be uh, stops of your trolley routes, and then you're going to be placing passengers on different trolley routes, and then also spending money along the way. And so, it's a really interesting. Uh, it has a almost a Lost Cities feel to it, in which you're going back and forth playing these cards uh, in between because the players control when scoring happens, which is one of my favorite things in games. So you're, the game is, you know, the players are the timer. That's not like so, over so many rounds or it's over so many scorings, but then the players control when those scorings happen once there's so many passengers on each of the lines. And so so kind of a tug of war back and forth type thing, trying to decide the timing of when you're gonna play certain cards. And theming is super weird, it's like German, tram routes um i i won't say it looks super great it looks kind of boring um but i, I think it's a, a really fun game that not a ton of people you know saw when it came out i don't think they did a whole lot of press for it but i thought it was a lot of fun um my game store was touting it as like a seven wonders killer i don't necessarily agree with that and <laughs> i think seven wonders is a fantastic game as well but um yeah, and I think they feel very different too, but I think I think the comparisons are fair. But yeah, that's Trombon. I love it. If you're able to find a copy, you should pick it up because it's probably pretty cheap. It was not a super uh, sought after game, um, but I don't believe they sell it like on Amazon anymore. But if you find it at a game store, I would definitely check it out. Wow, I mean, it's uh, you know you've gone sort of certainly out of the norm there with your your first pick and. Yeah, I, I mean, I've heard of it. I, I think I do actually remember the uh, the very peculiar theme uh, from your board game breakfast segment. It's probably the theme, the odd theme, that's probably actually made me remember such a such an odd game. It does yeah. seem like uh, a lot of the a lot of two player games work really well when you are doing that tug of war, and it sounds like that that sort of game captures that really nicely. To be fair, yeah, I think I have a couple more on my list that kind of have some elements of that because i think it is really common in two-player games yes yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so my number five is and, and it's at my number five because it's one of those ones that i've played quite a bit but i want to play it more and i'm sure it might might move higher actually if i do get to play it more and that is hive or in particular hive pocket uh, just because it's that bit more portable but in Hive, you've got the these sort of lovely, chunky, hexagon-shaped uh, tiles. They're not just like cardboard or anything. They're you know they are like plastic tiles, and you've got loads of different insects, and they all move and do things in different ways. You are trying to sort of surround one piece for, uh, while protecting yours. I, I think I'm struggling to remember what it is now. It's the queen bee or something the like queen that. Queen bee. Yep. That's the one. Yeah. <laughs> the, the name completely uh, lost there but I love the way that each of them moves in a different way so you really have to sort of like be strategic in terms of okay this can move to there but that could then block me in and then and you introduce these pieces in, in a certain way and like some jump around some move around the edge and it's all about trying to pen their queen bee in and I, it's one of those ones that it's completely abstract you know you don't really feel like the ant or the ladybird or whatever moves necessarily in that way in real life but they do really sort of interesting things 
once you're past that learning game of what what do all these insects do it's phenomenal and you can compete straight away after that first game at least have you do you enjoy hive have you played that one I, I have. I really love Hive. It was on my, we were talking about our, our this was on our my long list. Um, <laughs> yeah. And you mentioned the plastic tiles. I th- I remember for a while, people would often refer to that kind of hard plastic as like a, like the Hive pieces. Now it's everybody talks about them as Azul, like Azul pieces. Yeah. Um, but that's, it's the same, only they're bigger than Azul. So they feel heavier, they feel chunkier. Um, I remember when I picked this one up, it was so cool because I didn't have a board, but it was kind of, very chess-like um, in yes, how each yeah. piece moves moves differently. You're trying to capture a piece on the board. Uh, it plays diff- very differently, but it has a sam- similar feel to it, but it doesn't have a board. So on the internet, anytime anybody talks about like, oh, what's a game I could take to the beach? What's a day- game I could take camping? What's a game I can play? Everybody always says Hive because it can't blow away. It You can play it literally in grass. You could play it in gravel. You could play it in sand. You can play it in the pool if you wanted to if you wanted to dive under whatever so <laughs> yeah i think it's really cool i i really enjoy hive we don't play it a ton anymore but we used to play hive a whole lot and i really enjoy it so what is your number four my number four is a newer game i think it came out two years ago um and this one is watergate um Ooh. in the u.s it was brought over by capstone games i believe um and this is a back and forth game and it's asymmetrical the players do have different objectives in it one player is richard nixon one player is um the washington post the newspaper trying to uh expose nixon and his wrongdoings at watergate and um it's really interesting. It does have a central board, and the players are trying to pin evidence on this evidence board and trying to create routes to, you know, to to accuse uh, from these different witnesses and different people. And um, one, the Washington Post is trying to create those. Nixon is trying to foil those plans. The cards are very reminiscent of. Um, it's a different designer, but it feels very similar to a Twilight Struggle or a 1960 um, in which the cards have a couple different, you know, kind of multi-use cards. Cards can be used as um, the action printed on the card. And some of the, those are very thematic to whatever the, um, to each individual's deck. But then there's also these other things that you just like the colors of the evidence that you're playing on the board, a little bit more abstract. Um, but it does feel, <coughs> excuse me, very thematic in how the, the the decks were constructed and the back and forth and it's it's an excellent excellent two player game um, with a very interesting theme to it which I really appreciate. Have you ever played Watergate? I've not. No, it's one of those. It's one of those. Everyone was talking about it like when it came out and then quite quickly I found almost that people stopped talking about it. Mm-hmm. So it was almost like okay, I've missed that initial hype. Is it going to be sticking around? So the fact that you're, you know, you're bringing it up as one of the yeah. best two-player games, like, it does interest me. Like, and the theme is certainly an interesting one. Do you think that for someone that maybe thinks the theme is just sort of okay, would it still be as good, or would it you only know, be was, if you've invested? I was going to ask you, as somebody who's not from the states, if you did think the theme was interesting, because I do. I feel, you know, I wasn't around during that time uh, i don't want to shit out my age but um i wasn't wasn't an adult during the nixon era um as you could probably tell but i i think the theming it i think there is some you know you should have some interest in the theme but all but on the on the other hand it does teach you about the theme as well so as long as you're interested in learning about it um I think you'd be fine with it. I, you know, if they had a similar game about, you know, like a, a French prime minister, like a prime minister somewhere about like a scandal, frankly, I don't know if I would be super attached to it. So I could kind of see why, why some people might not be, but I think it was actually designed by a German designer and came out in Europe first. So I, I wonder if there is some interest regardless, but I know here in the States that there is a Barnes & Noble exclusive, like in a, a 
one of the main bookstores here has an exclusive version of it. So it, I, I've seen it around. So it is still, still out there, um, at least over here. So yeah, hopefully, I, I think if you're interested in learning about it, um, you'll definitely learn something from the game. Hmm. Well, maybe I'll have to uh, check that one out soon then. <laughs> yeah, I had I had a copy and I I gave it to a friend of mine who's a high school social studies teacher because um, <clears throat> he su he like super appreciated the historical theme, kind of the modern historical theme. It wasn't like you know a, his a historical game that wasn't just about World War II or just about the Civil War or because that's all we learned about in the U.S. schools. So. Um, <clears throat> I lent it to him, and I think he really he appreciates it probably more than I do, um, because of the theme. Hmm, fair enough. Yeah. Uh, my uh, number four is a a card game for the two players, and it's not, well, it's certainly not themed around uh, any scandals. It's uh, themed around geishas, although I think there is a newer version that's not themed around that, and it's Hanamikoji. So. Hanamakoji is one of those games where you have and you have the same exact set of actions as your opponent and you're trying to do exactly the same thing as them you're trying to get sets or the most um, of a numbered uh, set of cards because then you're gonna win over that geisha now the way it works is you take this action that's gonna be good for you but also maybe a bit good for your opponent in terms of you've got some cards from your hand you choose them and you're choosing this action that says you choose one of these cards but I then get to keep two of them or I'm gonna you know do a 50 50 split I get these two cards you get these two cards now that's really useful in, for you because you've got the information of what you've got in your hand you've got some information about what's out on the board but you don't know what they've got and you don't know what's in the deck as well so you're you know roughly the the amount of cards so you can be like right I need so many of the I need three of these for instance to win over that geisha you've already got one so and I've got two in my hand if I if I offer these to you you're probably just gonna take them because then you'll win it so then you've got to try and work out a way of like splitting them up and trying to win them slowly and it's just really fast paced between the two players uh, like you know I, I'm going to choose to do this you're taking that and then as it gets towards the end of the round you know a lot more information and you really start picking your battles um, of like what cards you really want and really want to hold on to um, but yeah it's one of those ones that it's like you can win it or if you don't quite get enough points or enough geishas then you play another round and you can keep going um, normally it's within two rounds someone's won um, so you know it's really helpful for playing just a couple of you at lunchtime or something like that uh, while at work um, but yeah Hanamikoji have you nice. played this one? I haven't I bought it for a friend once in hopes that we would play it together and we never did so Oh um, no! I have access to it, but I have not ever played it. Um, but I've heard really great things about it, and I think you're right. I think they did release a, a re-themed version um, of it, but I don't remember what that one was called either. Yeah, it, it, it's it's one of those ones where you you sometimes feel like you don't have enough information at the start of the mm -hmm. round, and then you make a bad choice by the end of it. You realize it was a bad choice. But then after a couple of games, you start to realize, I'm not going to even give you that ch that option near the beginning because it it might come round to sort of bite me at the end. Mm -hmm. um, so, so yeah, it, it, it's an interesting one. My number three is, um, let me look here, the smallest game on my list, which feels <laughs> trait to say, um, because this is a button shy wallet game. Uh -huh. um, I don't know if they have do those come over to the to Europe to the European market? I've actually I backed the Strawopolis or the uh, the new one uh, the Kickstarter so that Agropolis. should yeah that should be yes. coming right now. Great in the post. I, nice. I preview I previewed that one. That one's a lot of fun. Um, so this one's by the same designers. Okay. Um, this was Sprawlopolis as a solo or cooperative game. Um, this one is Circle the Wagons. This is a two-player competitive version of that. 
and it is <clears throat> played ver very similarly. Only in Sprawlopolis, you have a hand, you have your your cards that you're playing, <clears throat> and you don't necessarily have you have like a hand of cards, so you don't have to have like much of a choice. But since in Circle the Wagons, you're playing two players competitively, so you're going to have a circle, hence Circle the Wagons, and you're going to draft cards from the circle to put into your little tile laying space uh, with these cards and all of the spaces are going to have different landscapes on them and different um, kind of wild west symbols like pickaxes and <clears throat> bottles of alcohol and whatever they did back then and they <clears throat> they would you're then going to score your tile you know the cards that you've laid in front of you based off of positioning with these three scoring objectives. So like Sprawlopolis, like the upcoming um, Agropolis, each of the backs of the cards are going to be different scoring objectives. And so at the beginning of the game, you flip over three random scoring objectives, and that's your goal during the game, and that's how you're going to score things. And so Circle the Wagons works super well with that card drafting element to it, but also how the tile, the card tile laying works the I feel like the scoring isn't as difficult as Sprawlopolis. I, Sprawlopolis feels a, it is hard to do well in Sprawlopolis. It's hard to to win. It's hard to like even score more than zero points. It's one. It feels like one of those games where right. <laughs> Circle the Wagons doesn't feel quite as difficult. I'm not sure why that is. Maybe the scoring. Maybe they just made it a little different, but. I think Circle of the Wagons is excellent. I think it's it is my favorite of the button shy games and it just happens to be two players only. So that's why it's on this list. Yeah, and insane well, you know, as with all of theirs, insanely portable as well. Like yeah. you mentioned um with Hive earlier, you know, you could take it to the beach or whatever. Maybe you don't want to take it cuz it's just cards to the beach, but you know, if you've got a table, you know, anywhere, <clears throat> you, you don't need much room for Circle of the Wagon either, do you? It's uh no, no, it's not too the you know you're not playing so many cards that it's gonna like sprawl across the table. Uh, <clears throat> so yeah, it's it is very portable um, because it comes in just a little plastic wallet. I don't think I it's upstairs. I don't have it here, but yeah, it's just this little plastic wallet that folds up. Yeah. Hmm. Well, my number three does the opposite of that if you you know if if that is a small game that doesn't take up much room seven wonders duel is a game that i find does take up a good amount of the table first of all you've got this central um not board but central layout of cards uh which is how two-player drafting actually works you've got you know, in overlaid, you've got one card which is then over the top of two that are face down, which are over the top of three that are face up, and so on in like in different configurations and patterns. And when you take one card, often you then open up the opportunity for the other player to take multiple cards, or not multiple, but the option between multiple cards. And then it's got all the awesomeness of Seven Wonders in terms of you sort of you take a few buildings that maybe give you clay or something like that you know the resource generating buildings and then you can use them later on to get point scoring buildings or uh, gold market buildings that let you do extra stuff i really like the expansion for this one as well because it allows uh, the pantheon expansion because uh, it gives you an option a a one way basically around taking a card so the one concern I the, or issue I had with the base game of Seven Wonders Duel, which I think a lot of people like, is if I take that card and the one underneath it's face up and obviously really good for you, I'm not going to do that because it's going to give you that. But at times you are forced to. In this, with the Pantheon uh, expansion, there is a way to not take a card from the middle. And it just gives you that extra bit of extra choice to okay that card would be great for you i'm not going to uncover that for you so i'm going to do this action that doesn't make me not have to take one uh, and right. things like that so slightly caveated seven wonders jewel but with that pantheon the expansion X yes yeah you said seven yeah. wonders uh, earlier have you have you played jewel and uh, yeah what are your thoughts on the expansion as well for sure this was um 
Seven Wonders Duel was one of my uh, short on my short list. It was number five at one point before I kept thinking of other games. So um, <clears throat> yeah, Seven Wonders Duel is fantastic. I've never played with the expansion though. Um, it's one that I've wanted to do. I just never had a chance to get around to it. Um, I recently did a review for a game called um, oh what was it called about butterflies, fluttering souls. And it had a similar card drafting mechanic with kind of the pyramid kind of draft to it. And <clears throat> I couldn't help but compare it to Seven Wonders Duel and how much better Seven Wonders Duel is. Um, oh, it's, it was a, it was ve- it was much lighter. It had very little additional stuff going on to it uh, that Seven Wonders has. And so, but even even so, and I do like ve- I do like very simple games. I do really enjoy very you know highly streamlined uh, designs but <clears throat> seven wonders duel doesn't feel overwhelming and how much additional stuff there is to it if you're if you're familiar with the seven wonders game if you're familiar with a game like sushi so if you're familiar with a game like sushi go it would be kind of a step up from that but it's a very lateral move from regular seven wonders and i think it's I don't know if I like it better. I know a lot of people like it better, but I think I like it just about the same. I really do enjoy both. Yeah, I think oh, it's it's infinitely better than the the full full wonders at uh, full seven wonders at two player. Correct. There yeah. was there was the option to try and play, and that was that was pretty poor. Yeah. So I'm glad they came out with the seven wonders dual version. I don't think it's. I wouldn't say it's better. I, mm-hmm. I like the fact that I've not got the new version of Seven Wonders, but I very much like the fact that they've used the iconography style from Seven Wonders Jewel on the new versions of Seven Wonders, the second edition. You know, gone mm-hmm. a lot of the text has been removed. It's now like it uses like a vase symbol to show if you've built the building with the vase symbol, you can uh, get this one for free and stuff like that. So. I, I think the iconography was a great thing in that, so I'm glad that's also on yeah. uh, the full Seven Wonders now and as, as well. Yeah, no, great choice, great choice. So my number two is another off-the-beaten-path kind of game. Um, this one is from uh, f- uh, Todd Todd Fowers, I believe. Tim Fowers, it's Tim Fowers. Tim, yeah. <laughs> um, he did, what, Burgle Bros and Paperback, um, this is a two-player card game called Fugitive. This is a um, a kind of hidden movement, cat and mouse kind of game. Think like Scotland Yard, um, uh, Fury of Dracula, those types of games, only with two players and without the board. Um, and so as you're playing it, it's just a deck of cards. One player is um, a fugitive trying to escape. The other player is the detective trying to find the fugitive. And the fugitive is trying to um, cover his tracks and so you're playing these cards they're going to have literal footprints or tracks on them and they have numbers on them and you are trying to deduce where you believe the fugitive is on any given turn and where they have been which locations they have been as they're playing the cards and so you have a little you know a little notepad that you're writing all this information down as you're learning about um, where they might be and the other person is getting nervous. You know, they're they're catching up to you. It's great. I am so bad at it. I never win. I don't care if I'm the detective or the fugitive. I never win. But it, I think it is such a clever design. I think it is so cool how they're able to do have that that whole feel of kind of that bigger hidden movement game with just a, just a deck of cards. Really great. Yeah. I th- I, I, <coughs> oh yeah, you're right. Yep. Um, yeah, I, I very much. I like that hidden. I really like hidden movement, and I like the fact that they've, they've sort of captured some of that. I think my issue with that with Fugitive was the fact that I think after a few games of it, I found that if you're playing with the same person, it was very easy to fall into a rhythm of mm-hmm. you could kind of more ease more. Uh, easier than it, it, on say Whitehall Mysteries or something where you've got the board and you can move in any direction I found because you're always obviously going the one direction by playing the numbered cards up and up it just meant that, that you could get that rhythm and after a few games you kind of 
felt like I all right maybe I stop here. Mm-hmm. Um, it I didn't give me the it wasn't one of those games that I I wanted to keep playing over and over again unlike others but the fact it manages to capture hidden movement with just cards is still to be commended. Yeah. No, yeah. I I don't disagree with that um critique. So um maybe I just haven't played it enough. But I I really do enjoy it and um keep wanting to come back to it. So yeah. Number, What's your number my two? number my number two is one that um me and my wife always uh come back to every now and again. It's sort of one of those ones all right, let's let's play it again now. Let's see if you can guess what it is. It's it's at a market. There are camels involved, as well as a range of goods that you're trying to uh, to get. Any idea what it could be? Is it Jaipur? It is indeed. Yes. So I've I've not got the new the, the new newer fancy version with the, I think there was like the the coins for like proper coins for winning mm. um but uh it's still absolutely brilliant it's one of the the the, be- the probably the only games where you're you know happily shout out i'm taking all the camels um <laughs> which is a an unusual thing to to shout in any game um it's it's one of these ones where you've got this sort of small market of cards in front of you that depending on what you do offers up something different to um, your opponent and it's sometimes you taking a lot of the camel cards because you can take all of them from that central market at once camels are bri- brilliant for you but that means a load of new cards is going to come out for your opponent whereas if you were just swapping a couple of cards there's a lot less choice for your opponent unless that's you know unless you end up swapping what they want and you're trying to collect these sets of cards but you don't want to hold on to that set for too long a lot of set collection games i find you you just all right i'm just going to keep going i'm going to get as many of these as possible in jaipur if your opponent trades in a in a set of those first they'll take the top tokens of that type so you know if someone uh, trades in the red uh, type first they'll take the top red tokens and they're the most valuable so there's a sort of a, a line to draw where it's like right i've got enough of these that i'm going to get a bonus token for trading in a a full like a good amount of set of them but i'm still going to get the top values I'm not going to allow that my opponent to come and swoop in, grab those high value ones, and then, all right, I'll get points for them still, but I'm not going to get as many. So, the, it, and you never quite know when that's going to happen. You never quite know when your opponent's going to go. I just need the space in my hand, or I know you're going for these, so I'm just going to quickly burn them to get the those tokens out of play. And like you with one of the games you said earlier, where it's like you can determine when the round ends. By, mm-hmm. because it's when so many of the piles of tokens are gone. So, if you're if you think you're ahead, you can quickly throw down a load of cards to burn through some piles, to get them, and the round ends, and hopefully you've just about won, with your bonus tokens for trading in sets and stuff like that. You can you can try and win. But because of the bonuses and stuff like that, you never quite know how many points your opponent has. So it's uh, it's quite a nice one. And then it's the best of three, uh, which means even if you have a bad round, you can come, you know, you can fight back in the next one because you start it sort of thing. So uh, I like the way that balances that part out yeah. as well. Yeah, I love I love Jaipur. I think it's great. I was when I was talking to my wife about two player games, surprisingly to me because we haven't played this in a long time, she's like. The only one I can think of is that one with the camels. And I was like, <laughs> you know, we haven't played that in a long time. So it was definitely one that I considered. It was, it, It's an interesting kind of two-player trading game where you're not necessarily trading directly with your opponent, but in a way, you're, like, your opponent is making offerings of cards that they could take up into their hands. Um, it's just, it's, yeah, it's really cool with those hidden scoring coins and the way that your score doesn't necessarily carry from round to round. It's just like who wins carries to, from round to round, which is like 
you could get just obliterated in round one and then eke out two wins in the next two rounds and still still win. So I think it's really cool. I also have the old edition. Um, I think the new one looks really great, and I would. I think it has a norm, more normal size box because the original had a really weird long box. Yeah, it was um, really tall, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's really strange. Um, but yeah, I think that's a great choice and definitely one that almost made my list. Well, if you've also if you've got the old version, I don't know about the new version. I'm sure it's there somewhere. But one of the camels, there's like an Easter egg of I think there's like a small teddy bear or panda or something. Yeah, it's like, like hanging off in the back, like just hiding out. <laughs> yeah. uh, which it's just those sometimes those little things. It's just like that cam that camel card is worth exactly the same as every single other one. Right. But you kind of still yeah. want it that bit want more. Want that one right? a bit more than the rest. <laughs> That's great. No, I love Jaipur. It's a great choice. So we're on number ones, right? We are. Yes, this right. this is. You know, what is the best two-player is... only game? This is it. So this is my favorite two-player only game. This is one of my, <clears throat> to be honest, one of my top ten favorite games of all time. Um, I absolutely have fallen in love with this game. This game. <clears throat> I think came out the same year as Watergate. It just came out a couple years ago. Um, and I feel like I am one of the kind of champions of this game. It's not super popular, but is is generally well received. It's not like one that uh, generally people don't like. Um, <clears throat> but that is um, Mandala. Mandala is a two-player card game. Um, also from Lookout, just like um, Trombon is. But this one has one of the most interesting things about Mandala to me is that, you know, I had Trombon, I had Watergate, Circle of Wagons to a lesser extent. They all have multi-use cards. You know, they take cards and you can use them in different ways. Mandala has <clears throat> one use for the cards. And unlike a regular, like a deck of cards, like a bicycle deck of cards where you have color, suit, and number on it, a rank on it. <clears throat> Mandala has one piece of information on the whole card. They're square cards <clears throat> and it only has a color or it has a pattern or whatever, but it is a color. That's the only piece of information on this card. And <clears throat> you're going to play a full game with only cards that have one piece of information on them. It has a thing we've been talking about that kind of player controlled scoring and it it has variable scoring throughout, which is really interesting. But you're going to have this mat out. And the production is also great because it's like this cloth mat that's <clears throat> really well, um, uh, has really nice artwork on it. And on your turn, you're going to be playing cards or scoring cards. <clears throat> and as you're playing cards, you're going to be playing cards to these uh, joint sections on the boards. There's two main parts of the board. There's joint sections, and then there's sections on your own. And you play cards to one of those sections, but you can't have the same color in multiple sections. So if your opponent plays a card on their side, you can't play that color on your side or in the joint section. So there's a lot of back and forth there because you only, you're going to want certain colors that your opponent <coughs> doesn't want you to have, or they also want that color. And as the game progresses, you're going to be collecting these cards and put them in your scoring piles. In your scoring piles, the game, the cards you collect earlier in the game are worth fewer points than the cards you collect later in the game. And so, <clears throat> oh, there's just so many layers to it. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> so many layers to it. And it, um, me and a buddy of mine, we just played it over and over and over again. I lent it to him, and every time I went to his house, we would play it. Whenever he would come over, we would play it like three, four times in a row. It's one of those games that plays fairly quickly and you can just kind of reach, you know, it's just a deck of cards. You just shuffle back up, <clears throat> put it out, and you start playing again. And it's just so good. It doesn't take super long, but there's so many layers and there's such, there's really good tactics to it. It's not a, you know, it has some general strategies, but it's a very tactical game because you're playing against that person. You don't know what they're going to be playing. That's Mandala. I absolutely love Mandala, one of my favorite games. Yeah, a, oh, you've said a few of mine have been on your short list. Well, this one was pretty much the shortest of lists. This was basically number six. Um, it, it, 
it's it's great for all of the reasons you said uh the the part that really i <coughs> love is the fact that i can collect a load of these cards and then try and get it you know i can if but if i take them too early they're only going to be worth two three points mm -hmm. but potentially if i can put it off or just grab a load of other colors really early on and then focus on these four five point colors after that you can get so many points but then your opponent as the opponent you can then realize that that's what the color they're going for and then if you just play one of those on your side there's not going to be any of that color available in the middle or they can't play that color to claim it so there's so many options to sort of take the opportunity of scoring points away from someone at the same time there's so many opportunities to to play the cards in the right way and get such a huge amount of points yeah it's so easy to force your opponent to have nothing in the six point spot depending on when they when they trigger that it's it's so interesting i really love it the yeah. only thing that <clears throat> i would say production and artwork is great but the cards are square which is really hard to shuffle oh. yes yeah <laughs> but... and it's quite a, it's quite a tall deck as well to try and shuffle these t <laughs> like quite there's there's good like maybe a hundred of these cut square it's a, cards it's a really, and yeah it's yeah, it's, really it's, it's, deck, it's quite so. a hard one yeah that yeah that's a potent well an issue i really i Among like the issues though that's yeah i like and point. dislike the the you know the cloth mat like it, it <laughs> works really nice but it just feels when you're packing it away in the box that it's just creasing in the wrong places yeah. really nice though you know it's it feels like you're getting an upgrade in the core box right <laughs> yeah yeah it's like the you know the game is only that and a deck of cards so they were able to splurge a little bit on it i guess yeah well, yeah. very interesting that your number one has a, a a mat of sorts, and my number one also has a mat of sorts. Ooh. Onitama. Now, this is a game... Now, I used to really enjoy chess, and to be fair, I still kind of do, but to me, Onitama scratches that itch perfectly while being a very different experience. So you've got um, basically pawns and a king or queen, effectively they're sort of students and a master in this, on a five by five grid. Yours all start at your side, your opponents all start at their side on this five by five grid. To win, all you've got to do is either take their master, their king piece, or get your king piece past them to the river, which is basically the exact same part where your where your king or your master starts, that's where they're trying to get to and vice versa. The way you do that is via only five cards and they rotate as you play. So they've all got patterns on. So this one card might have uh, a diagonal movement forward one space uh, to the left and then you know maybe back one space but to the right. Uh, three spaces or something like that and a, a really odd pattern of movement and you can do one of those if you play that card all of the cards have different movement options and you only have to have two of them on your turn whatever you use then goes around the table to your opponent for their ne for their like following turn that's what they will be getting and you'll take what they've given to you and what this means it has that tug of war style logic in terms of whatever i give to you you're then going to be able to use back on me in a minute so i've had games where there haven't been a single card where there's been forward movement so you have to zigzag up the board and then other games there's only been say one of those forward movements and that's been like a rare commodity that you don't want to use because then your opponent's got it and things like that and mm -hmm. you can play well there's the two different ways to win which means the game doesn't always end in the same way as well um have you have you played onitama i have and you know i totally forgot about it because i don't own it um i've only ever played it on the app so i um 
<clears throat> I totally forgot about it, but that is an excellent <laughs> choice. I think the what's extra interesting about it is that whenever you use the card, it has to go, you know, your opponent is going to receive access to it. Um, and so, yeah, it's just really cool in how that works. Yeah, it's, I mean, the component quality as well, absolutely phenomenal. It's, you know, it's um, it's not just a cloth, it's not just a mat, it's a rolled, um, a nice mat. You've got these mm -hmm. chunky plastic player pieces um, that you, you know, you it doesn't matter what direction they face, but they've got, like, yeah. faces and, and things like that. No, that's great. And, uh, yeah, and then you've got these cards that are then they're big they're still not hard. i wouldn't say they're hard to shuffle but they are a nice size mm -hmm. and the expansions that add more cards that just means you've got more variety you never need them but you want them yeah, <laughs> and I, that's great. you know there's so many cards in the base game and you only use five of them at a time just swapping one in and one out completely changes the next how the next game plays you still if you're anything like me, you still want all these other options. Mm -hmm. Even just mean it just means every game feels so different. Even though you're doing the same thing, moving these pieces around this five by five grid. Yeah, but it's great. The app is also absolutely phenomenal as well. It's that uh, is how I've played the game, and it's really good. It's yeah. really really good. So I did have a couple of honourable mentions. Uh, mm -hmm. Mandala was one for me that you uh, you mentioned there. Yeah. And probably the the other one that is it a game? Is it an activity? Maybe that's kind of why it's not on the list. It was it's Fog of Love. It's one of those games oh, okay. that is so different, and it's not for everyone. It, it it it's not on the top list for me because while it's a good experience, you can it's you can't experience it maybe too many times. Although you can replay. It's not like an escape <coughs> room where. You know the answers to the puzzle. Different things can can occur. Basically, you are a part of a couple. You and the other player. You know, you could have that as your partner. You could have that as your friend, or if you're, you know, really up for it, a complete stranger, and you can. <laughs> you basically play one half of that couple. You get cards dealt to you in terms of, you know, what are your you know, characteristics. Um, you can choose if you're male and female and stuff like that, mm -hmm. and then you just play this scenario out and see see what happens. You know, you they go on a date. What what do they do? Do they choose the same things? And it's just an unusual experience that yeah. just makes you think a little bit. Um, but uh, cool. yeah, it it might not be. It's certainly not for everyone. But uh, yeah, for I have I have not played it, um, but it does sound interesting. Um, my two honorable mentions were Seven Wonders Duel, which you had talked about, and we we both talked about. But my other one was, um, I'll be honest, I was trying to find it because I can't remember the exact title of it, but I can't find it. I don't know where. There were a couple games that I was looking for, and I just have no clue where they went. Um, but it's Blocus, I think Duo or Duel. Um, it's Blocus, but with two players. Um, and we, okay. you know, it's an abstract game. You know, you have the Tetris-shaped pieces, and you're just trying to block each other out, um, just kind of placing everywhere on the board. It just plays super well, and it's a lot of fun. Um, I have an old version of it. I think the new one might be black and white. Mine is purple and orange. Um, maybe it's Blokus Travel Edition. I don't know, but it's two players. Um, m m regular Blokus is four players. You can play it two players as well. You just control two colors. But... I think the two-player version is really good, and it's one that we we play a lot. So, yeah. So it's kind a bit a like classic, classic game too. A bit like Seven Wonders Duel, there maybe then, where it's like Seven Wonders doesn't really work at two, but it can just about. Is it is it a similar vibe there, where it's kind of? I think so. I think so. Yeah, and I think it's it's very familiar. A lot of people know what Blocus is. A lot of people have played it. You know, um, and I, I really like Blokus. I think it's a fantastic game. I think I like the two-player version better because uh, the board is a bit more open. You have a little bit more space to move around, but it's great. Oh, well, well, there you go, everyone. A range of phenomenal games for two players only. If you're interested, I did a top five games, uh, two-player, but not only 
two-player games with Randy and Ellen recently, so check that out on the channel. But Jordan, where can people find you if they want to find more of your stuff? Well, um, if you want to find me in person, I live in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. <laughs> um, but on the internet, I'm usually places that have uh, that are at Jordan Plays Blue, um, mostly on Instagram. I do a series of quick review, quickly reviews over there with um, pictures and video and some graphic design stuff. And then I have a TikTok and a YouTube channel as well that are both that are all at Jordan Plays Blue, and also on the Dice Towers board game breakfast and some other stuff they do over there perfect so make sure you check uh, all of those out and sub and follow jordan there people anyway thank you very much for joining me today on this top five list and uh, thank you everyone for watching goodbye goodbye <laughs>